Okay, so the key to seeing your audio waveforms in Avid is this button right here, this track control panel. If this is not opened up, you don't even really have the option to see your waveforms. When I open this up, I close it, open it, close it, open it, and you see right here, you get some of these options. One is which to monitor a track. In a sense, if I press this button on or off, I could turn this whole track off. In a sense, the audio won't play while you're playing it down. And you have something to add in some track effects, reverb, and, and all different types of audio effects. But here is what we're, to, we're here for. This button right here is the audio waveform. So if I click it on, you'll see Avid will generate beautiful waveforms. I personally am somebody that likes to edit with waveforms. I'm actually very surprised sometimes when I see people edit without them. Now, obviously, there's times when you, you, you would need them, and sometimes you don't. If you're just working on the visuals, you don't need certainly need them there. It can slow up your computer a little bit for Avid to generate them, especially if you have a long sequence. But in this case here, like this track here, just track two, is all VOs for me. So it's a very easy visual representation to see, all right, here's the words of the VO artist speaking. And you can see sometimes... If if you're editing, you can visually see you might have cut off the VO. You could see it here, right? Um, if I go back there, the VO starts at this frame, not at this frame. So just a visual representation. You should be able to hear it either way, but just something to think about. So if you need to make your track bigger, you could hit Control L or get it back to normal size Control K. But to increase or decrease the size of the waveform themselves, it's Control Alt K and Control Alt L. Not sure why you would want it to have bigger, but sometimes, you know, if something comes in very loud, you might want to make it smaller so you can see it better. Otherwise, it's too like this is something too big. You can't really see it too well. So control alt K and control alt L. Another thing I'll say with music, so I make this one bigger. I don't really use waveforms too much on music. And you can see here the representation with the track being this gray and, and the waveforms being gray. That's not such a good look there. So change this track color to something where you can see it more. But with music, there's almost so much happening waveform wise. And in this case, I have a stereo track, so it's showing like the two different waveforms. I don't know, it doesn't really help unless you have like something with a really sting where the music goes in and out. You might want to see the exact frame where the, the, the beat happens, the beat changes. But for a song itself, I don't really use waveforms. A couple of other quick things here, in case you're wondering why I have these marks on the track, I have a video all about audio, rubber banding. In this case, I am showing the audio data of the volumes. If you ever take over someone's sequences who was using audio rubber band and you get this little keyframe in the middle, that is why this audio data was not showing the volume, but it's telling you that there are keyframes in that clip itself. One other thing to think, to think about, you could sort of save your timeline view. You might want to save as something called BT, my initials, BT waveform. I don't really do that too much, but you might want to have, if you, if you know you're doing the same things over and over again, you might want to have a view that just has the waveforms all on it and the track sizes might be different, something for audio, just something to think about there. And here's something that I've never actually used myself, but if you go into timeline settings, there is a button here called show marked waveforms. And in theory, you had a super long sequence. You don't want Avid to generate all the waveforms for the whole sequence. And what will happen here is even though the waveform is on, it'll only show the waveforms in a place where I mark and in and out. I find this a little bit, you know, a little probably too much work intensive. I don't have a problem, I guess, with computers and newer computers. I don't really have a problem with Avid generating waveforms where it slows me up that much. So I don't use this show marked waveforms. But just to show you that it's there, and we will turn this off. And now as I go back, you see it did the waveforms for the, any of the tracks that I have highlighted here. The other thing to think about for you Premiere users, if you want to see the waveforms of the clip, you can't really see it in the source monitor. That is a nice feature of Premiere. The way you would do that here, you would go into Avid and you would go into source toggle record mode. Now I'm looking at a a sequence of this clip in the source monitor because I switched this source monitor and I could put the waveform on and let's see yeah so this actually was annoying it took a while to generate because it's an hour and a half clip and you can see here I'll hit control L but you can see but the waveforms are so big you can't tell any information from it and that's where I would hit the control alt K to bring this down so that's just something to think about waveforms in Avid Something I use almost every single time I'm editing anything is looking at the waveforms. And something I use almost every time I'm watching a football game is a good beer. 
and a beer I drank this past weekend was this Sam Adams Wicked Hazy Delicious uh, IPA, 6.8% alcohol, which will help when your favorite football team lose and get destroyed every single weekend. Take the 2021 Avid course to learn Avid in short five-minute videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next.